All right, today is part two of this character animation. If you didn't see part one, you can go back to my previous video and check that out where I draw the character. And in this one, I'm gonna animate it and add some interactions. Let me know what you'd like me to do next. Leave a comment with your suggestions for tutorials or tips or things you'd like to see. Now I'm gonna select this whole thing, put it in a group, and I'll name it character. Now I'm gonna add a behavior to the group. So I wanna give this thing some life. So I'm gonna say new behavior. And in the behavior designer, I've got my initial state here, and I'm gonna add a new state. And in this state, I'm gonna move these tentacles a little bit. So I'm just gonna select the end point here. I can move it around, but I just wanna move it slightly. I don't wanna overdo it. And maybe I'll move them all sort of in the same way. Now, if I press space, it'll toggle back to the initial state and I can kind of test out the animation. Now that looks a little bit too much like some kind of a spiral or something, so I'm gonna move this one back the other way. Forever, so that it loops back and forth. The easy way to insert a timer link in the behavior designer is to right click on one state, drag over to the other state, and then you can choose a timeout here, which I'm gonna to set to zero. And then from the new state, I'm gonna right click drag back to the initial state, and again, set the timeout to zero. And if I open the preview now, you can see that it's going back and forth. But the movement looks very unnatural. So let's adjust the easing to make this look more natural. I'm gonna select the background shape of the character, scroll down the inspector to the timing section, and choose classic easing. And this sort of ease in out pattern I think will work well. I'm gonna turn the duration up to 800 milliseconds because I want this to go kind of slow. Now it looks a lot more smooth and it's slow, so it looks like this character is maybe uh, swaying in the currents of the ocean or something. I'm gonna name this behavior character movement, and then I'll exit out of the behavior designer. Now I wanna add another behavior. So with the same group selected, I'm gonna go over to the inspector and choose add behavior, new behavior. So now I'm gonna have a second behavior applied to the same group. And on this behavior, I'm going to add a new state and in the new state, I'm gonna change the background color of the character. I'm gonna have a subtle color change. I'm gonna add another one and make it change to yet another color. So this is some sort of color changing creature. All right, now I can add additional colors, but this seems okay. I'm gonna use timer links again, and this time I'm gonna loop between all three states. So a timer link from the initial state to the new state with zero millisecond timeout. Same thing from the new state to the second new state. And then from that last state back to the initial state, again with zero millisecond timeout. Now the easing, I wanna make this a really slow color change. So I can drag this up to a thousand milliseconds, which is one second, but I'm actually just gonna type in 2000 to get two, mil two seconds. Okay, let's open up the preview. And now every two seconds, it should be going between one of those color states. So it's a very subtle, very slow color fade animation. And that combined with the movement makes us look fairly natural. So I'm happy with that. Now let's add one more behavior. So I'm gonna exit out of the behavior designer. Oh, and I forgot to give that one a name. I'm gonna call this character color. I'm gonna add one more behavior. This one will be called character interaction. I'll add another state in this behavior. And in this new state, I'm going to make the character blink by dragging the eyes down. And let me show you how I did that. I selected one of the eyes. I'm selecting the up, down, resize handle here in the center. And I'm holding option, which resizes it from the center. So I can drag it down like that. Drag this one down so it looks like the eyes are closing. And I'm gonna adjust these corners here so it turns into more of a, almost a rectangular shape. I think that looks a little bit better. Looks like closed eyes. Maybe if I rotate those upwards, and to do that, you can select the shape, hold Command, and then mouse over one of the corner handles. I'm gonna rotate it upwards a little bit. So it's kind of a happy, happy appearance there. And I'm gonna have the mouth turn into a smile. If I double click here, well, he was already smiling, right? So that's just a different type of a smile. Let's change this point to mirrored. 
Now this is not looking... That looks really bizarre, I think. Oh, maybe it's okay. I don't know, I don't like that. I'm gonna actually turn this into maybe a circular shape, like a small circular mouth shape. Let's zoom in a bit on this. Kind of looks like it's in anguish now. Okay, that could work. So to set up the interaction, oh, we got that animation is going way too slow because I adjusted the timing on the last one. So let's go down here. I'm selecting the both the eyes and the mouth. I'm gonna come down here and I think I'll use spring, the default spring here. Okay, that looks better, it's faster. And let's set it up so that if you tap here in the middle of the face, it goes to this new state. And actually it won't be a tap, it'll be a touch down. And then I'm gonna copy this link, select the new state and paste that link in here. The reason I copied and pasted it was to make sure that it's in the exact same place. Now I'm gonna retarget this because this one should be going back to the initial state and it should use a touch up. And I'm going to add one additional link to this, which will be a mouse out, just in case you touch down and then move your mouse out. So if you hold shift and click create link, that creates an additional link that will also target the initial state and I'll use mouse out. All right, let's try this. So we've got our color change effect, we've got our motion effect, and now if I tap down, we've got that happy face, the sort of soothed face, like I'm giving it a massage or something. And that stays as long as I hold my mouse down. And while my mouse is down, if I drag my mouse out, it resets. That's because of that mouse out gesture that I added. Cool, so that's a fun use of Flinto. It kind of shows the flexibility to do different types of animations. Of course, this isn't strictly a UI animation, which is what Flinto is usually used for, but it shows some techniques of editing vector shapes, using the behavior designer, combining multiple behaviors, and kind of pushing Flinto's limits to create a character animation rather than a UI design.